Grandmaster P. Indian is a very talented youngster of Indian chess. He was recently in Hamburg at the chess base office and he told everyone that I am going to give you a position which is extremely tough. And also at the office during the same period was Pragnananda over there. And so he gave that position to Prag, this one that you see on the screen to think. It's Indian versus Thomas Anisia. Uh, this was in the fifth round of Letor K Open and it is uh, over here white to play and figure out how to win. So what I would recommend you to do is to pause the video and think a bit. It's not like a one move or a three move solution. It's a long line. It's a very practical end game, but somehow the moves are very forcing. Think for a bit and then check out Indian's video. Uh, explaining this to Pragnananda as uh, Frederick Friedel shoots this entire thing and then you can also uh, I will also try to explain it over here on the board so in that way you can learn a lot out of it but this is a great position to improve your calculation skills your rook end game ability your ability to spot the only moves even when you think there are many options so you calculate and you figure what is the best move in the position so pause the video and get thinking. So in this position, uh, it is white to play. Um, white is pawn up and black is threatening to take on c4. White, uh, white's best try to win is to keep the pawn alive and uh, try to play on the king side, push the pawns. White has few possibilities: rook d2, king d3, king d3, h5 and g5. You know, before h5, g5 does not work. It's just like defense here. Rook d2, this is what I played in the game. Uh, rook into c4, rook into d6, king f7. And uh, the problem is after d7 here, white is unable to um, move his pawns on the king side. Pieces are stuck. So, coming to the brilliant idea, um, for both sides, white's main option at the first uh, moment is king d3 bringing the king to the center black plays rook h8 attacking the pawn rook h2 rook f8 stopping white from playing king e4 because of the check and take on g4 so white goes for h5 king h6 stopping the h1 rook g2 threatening g5 white black stops with king g5 white goes king e4 uh, now advancing the king rook f4 is no, no longer a problem king d5 wins again but black has the other defense, rook c8, hitting the pawn. King d5 anyways, uh, rook check, king takes. Black cannot take on uh, c3 because the e5 pawn is hanging, so e4 first. And now uh, white has uh, some options, rook e2 or rook h2, both are uh, drawish. Rook h2 is the main option here. King takes g4, h6, rook c8, h7, rook h8. And now uh, white goes king e5, e3, king uh, f6, king g3, attack the rook, rook h1, e2, and then black spawn also queens there. After king f2, black is in time to get the pawn on c3. So, so now we know that king d3 is not working, let's try the other option, king b3. If uh, black is uh, not playing very actively, white's next move will be something like rook d2, hitting the pawn on d6, and black's rook will be tied to defense, white wins the game. So black plays rook h8, as usual rook h2 uh, defends the pawn, the pawn cannot be given. And now black's, uh, black's main point is uh, rook h7, just giving the waiting move to white. Problem for white is that h5 at any point draws because of king g5, g5 draws because black king gets to h5, or king f5, king g4. If white plays king c2, then once again rook c7 comes, hitting the pawn on the c5. So the idea for black is in this position, if white king is on b3, black is going to stay on rook h8, rook h7, white goes king c2, black plays rook uh, c7, if king d3 then rook f7. But uh, white has some uh, possibilities to improve, a3 or a4, rook h1 or rook h3, or a com combination of both the pawn and the rook moves. So what do we do here, let's try one by one, putting the rook on h1, Rook h8, once again king c2 does not make a difference, black uh, gets the same thing, let's see king uh, c2, rook c8, king d3, rook f8, h5, king h6, rook g1, king g5, king g4, rook c8, and after the whole variation, here it's the same, and uh, seven, rook h8, here we gain one tempo, because king, there is no king g3 attacking rook on h2, but black still goes e2, king g7, rook takes, King takes king f3, king g6, king f4, 
to king f5 queens rook takes king takes and king e5 or king e4 does not matter king d2 and king d4 king c2 is a draw because c5 black just takes so white first plays c5 takes c4 uh, king c3 king d5 king d4 making a draw uh, white the king makes a defense here after Indian explained that previous line, here's the beautiful point which you should know. So white starts with king b3, black does play rook h8, rook goes to h2, now rook h7, waiting move. And white now waits with this very nice move a3. <clears throat> and what is the point of this move? That if you go to the end of that line, where it was a king and pawn endgame and the king was coming here to d2 and then going to b4 that square is covered so let's see how that works rook h8 now rook h1 waiting move black still waits and now white comes with his king rook c7 king d3 rook f7 you go h5 king has to go to h6 rook g1 threatening uh, g5 at the right moment so you go king g5 uh, here is another very cute point that if you go rook c7 then maybe not g5 just yet because king takes h5 but you play the move c5 and uh, of course if you take a d takes c5 then king e4 is trouble and if you play b takes c5 then king e4 once again the king is entering the position so you may want to play rook takes c5 but now g5 works perfectly because now g6 g7 is coming in and white is completely winning so that's the reason why here after rook g1 it's important to block with king g5 king e4 there comes rook c7 by the way here a very special defense is rook e7 because then when the king moves you can push the e4 pawn the pawn to e4 however after rook c7 king d5 rook c5 takes e4 we suddenly start to see the point of a3 that after rook h1 king g4 at 6 rook goes back at 7 this was the same variation that Indian had shown to Prague but here the difference is that there is a pawn on a3 and this makes all the difference because now after king here king d2 c5 takes c4 king here king d5 there is no king b4 and this is the entire point of this brilliant play a uh, beautiful uh, endgame shown by Indian and to end this I would show a variation where Indian and Pragnananda are analyzing this very position where um, <clears throat> instead of yeah like after king b3 uh, what we just discussed instead of a3 if you go for this entire line with rook h1 and uh, not with a3 here and this entire sequence then they are analyzing this very position king d4 king c2 and now there is a move a4 that they are analyzing have a look at this analysis and then i'll show you some very nice moments from mm -hmm. King effect, 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 king A4 much if I can. No, A4 rise. Uh, full A5. Oh, yes, of course. Mm. Oh, C5. No, King is here. So. No, 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 no. no. That's because if this is the position I can start. No, 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 wait. Something is a problem. No, I already have the pawn on a4. Mm -hmm. This is why to play king on a5. Yeah, no, 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 no. King was on e5. Yeah, that's okay. what. I'll go king d4. Now you have to go a5. 
The discussion of Prague and Indian in this position was very interesting. Uh, you were right that here A5 actually draws Prague was correct in this position. Um, but if you play King B2, A5, and I think they reach this position A6 over here, uh, King A4, here there is a very special way to win. In fact, uh, they were analyzing the move c5 and Indian was absolutely right uh, that king b5 is the correct move because if you take take king a5, this is winning. They, they saw this and this is winning for white. But there is this move king b5 after c5 which leads to a draw. But there is a winning move here for white and this is absolutely spectacular. The move is king d5. And the point of it is that after king uh, a5, you now push the pawn. And let's say if he takes the pawn on a6, then you push c6 and you are completely winning. Because next move I go king here and this pawn is queening. So you must take the pawn. And here comes the spectacular move, king to c6. And your threat is now to play king b7 and pick this pawn. So therefore black must take on a6. And then you play the very special move c4. Now black has only move king a5. Now you take the pawn. And after a6, uh, king d6, white is way fast, way faster. And manages to win the game here. Because the queen comes back and stops the pawn. So that was a small bit of analysis there. Uh, of that nice endgame but of course the entire point of this endgame was to find these little nuances uh, we will be linking the PGN in the description so you can check it out it's a beautiful bit of analysis done by Indian and we thank him for sharing this endgame and expanding our scope of analysis and understanding of this very complex endgame this is Sagar Shah signing off bye bye